Welcome to season two of No Shelf Control, the podcast with books, booze, and banter hosted by authors for readers, because let's face it, we are all bookworms at heart. This season, we'll be chatting about book to screen adaptations and trending book talk books. I'm Lindsay Sparks. And I'm Lindsay Pogue. Grab a cocktail, kick back, and enjoy the show. (laughs) (laughs) A rare Tuesday night recording. Yeah. (laughs) Mm. Um, Okay, so uh, I course had to mess up the beginning I forgot that I'm reading the welcome (laughs) (laughs) welcome to the 13th episode 13th episode for Halloween of the second season of no shelf control this episode features a book to screen adaptation um this is an older book um and it's a book that I know I've wanted to read for a long time and I think we have you have as well Mm-hmm. wanted to read it definitely been curious about it yeah yeah, because it's a movie that we both love um and so that book is the devil wears prada by lauren weisberger uh which i think falls into the like contemporary women's fiction genre i don't know it's not like a romance it's not yeah I, I don't know if it's chiclet or i'm not sure what it is yeah chiclet yeah there maybe that's the right one for that <laughs> Um, but before we get into the book talk, um, not like, you know what I mean? Chatting about the book before we get into chatting about the book and the movie, (laughs) (laughs) tell me what you're drinking tonight. So I am drinking a yummy Francis Coppola rosé. Still? Yeah, it's still. And it has this really cute little bottle. They're little half bottles. Aww, and it's it's, it's pretty in pink and it's adorable. And it's actually really good rosé too. So mm, good. Anyway. Yeah. So um, how about you? I'm drinking red wine. <laughs> Nobody is surprised at all. So hey, it was in the me... fridge though. So it's like very cool. I <laughs> know mine is too. I should have pulled it out and poured it earlier. It's quite cold. I'll let that open up a little bit. <laughs> um okay so uh what have you been working on I know you've been working on a lot because you'll just have to tell everybody what you were doing last week yeah so uh I just got back from a retreat which was really fun oh showing a little shoulder there Ooh, sassy (laughs) (laughs) that's what happens when you wear clothes that are too big for you and too comfortable they just seem to you know come off at their own accord okay so (laughs) Uh, I just got back um, this weekend from uh, a retreat with fellow authors. Um, I was there with um, Ann Giever and um, Camille Picot. And we just, we, it was really cool. Because one of those things was like, we did our own thing during the day. Like we buckled down and we worked on our individual project, you know, projects or whatever. So it was really cool. I was able to get a lot done with no distractions um, cause you know, when you're at home, you have kids and you have animals <laughs> and you have mailmen and you have whatever. Yeah. Right. And so it's, yeah, it was so nice to be in a place where I could just like hold myself away and be focused and not distracted, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we did that and then we, at night we were able to like cook together or whatever. And it was fun. Um, but anyway, I was able to get, um, all of my land of, um, Linda Fury, my after writing the draft, getting it all re- you know read through and everything, so I could send it out to beta readers. So, got that out. That feels really really good. Um, Sea of Storm is coming out November eighth, so I'm like chugging away trying to like make sure you know how it is. Like mm-hmm. I feel like you could have a thousand launches and you still feel like you're missing something and it's still chaotic and like yeah. you keep forgetting. Oh yeah, I should do that. I should have done that a week yeah. ago or whatever. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> of course, it didn't account for any of these things. Yes, of course. That's um, the thing. That's the thing. I feel like when we put it in our calendars, it's like, and it's release day, la di da. Yeah, and you don't account for like the weeks leading up to it or yeah. months leading up to it. Um. So, anyways, just been tackling that, and um. I actually have something really fun that I stumbled upon today that I'm super stoked for my Patreon people. Um, I forgot. So I was, you know, I kind of talked a little bit about my super secret project that I'm going to be working Mm -hmm. on this next year. And I've started outlining it and kind of brainstorming a little bit. And in doing so, like this scene popped into my head. And then I started thinking, 
wait, this feels familiar. And so I was like, wait a second. That was, I originally had an idea for that scene for the original Darkest Winter um, manuscript. And then I was like, wait, I actually remember writing that scene. (laughs) So then I started really thinking, I was like, what did I ever do with that? guess what I found like that scene 10 chapters from a story that I completely changed it still had Ellen Jackson as I pictured them in my head but like the characters are different like the supporting characters there's their location is different everything is so different so it's really fun and interesting and so I'm really excited to release it um the chapters to my patreon people because I think they're gonna be like whoa this is insane so so are you gonna like clean it up at all or are you just yeah I still have to read through it all and I'm not going to edit it or anything like that because it's like probably just cuts off (laughs) I don't even know where it cuts off it's not (laughs) like it's a completed book but I know that people who have read The Darkest Winter are going to be pretty interested just because it is so different and Ellen Jackson are in it and but their backstories are different a little different and um, like I said, the setting's different. It's not in Alaska. It's like in the country and it's just so different and fun. And um, anyway, I'm excited. So I, oh, I'm excited okay. to go back and reread it. Um, and it even had a different name. It was called In Light and Shadow, which I thought was really cool. Don't remember naming it that. Huh. So it was really hard to find. I'll tell you that. I was like, <laughs> where the hell did I save that? Because I didn't know what I'd called it. Like work in progress. I didn't know. Hmm. Um, anyways. Long story short, um, yeah, after like an hour dealing with Scrivener updates and trying to get back old (laughs) old stories that I'd written on it, uh, I finally have it. So I'm really excited, like I said, for Patreon people to start getting that. I have no idea what I'll do with it afterwards. Just hang on to it. But at least somebody will see it. It was inside Scrivener. Yeah. Yeah, And I have like such an old version because my computer doesn't even support like the original version anymore. So I had to like email them and they had to tell me all the steps to get the new version and stuff. So <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so I think it's going to be really cool for readers. So I'm excited to show that coming up. So yeah, that's kind of where, where I've been. What about you? Um, I have started book two of the Fateless Trilogy, Darkness Between the Stars. Um, and uh, I am on chapter eight, I think. Uh, so I'm zipping right along. And it's been fun because my process is a little bit different this time. I'm not skeleton drafting. I'm actually have only I plotted, but only lightly, like um, just like the plot point, major plot points and enough that I can then fill in like as I'm going, like there'll be a chapter here, but I'm only putting my beats in like the day that I'm writing the chapter. So it's been a different process for me, but I feel like because I've been doing so much serial writing that it actually works a lot better for me um, lately uh, to not feel bogged down, I guess, by knowing every single thing that's about to come up. So, and, and it feels kind of like freeing, freeing, like not being like tied to future details, you know, just working with future plot points, which is nice. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm working on, um, in my rough draft phase and, uh, I've just been doing like lots of stuff behind the scenes for podcasts and Patreon and Instagram and just like trying to get, trying to like get myself more functional and efficient, um, with like all the behind the scenes stuff. So kind of a never ending battle. I know, but I, um, I just like adore the serialization process so much, uh, and writing in serials that I'm just have been finding myself leaning more and more into that, which is what I do on Patreon. And so I've just been figuring out ways to make that my like way that I work. So Mm -hmm. it's been on my mind a lot and I don't feel like I can do it fully switch over fully to like serial serials first until, I finished the two series that I'm almost, or the, not that I'm almost done with, but until I finish Fateless Trilogy, which is like partially, I'm partially serializing right now because I'm making it available to patrons as I'm writing it, but I'm not doing it like in, in, in episodes. Um, but, uh, and then I need to finish Atlantis Legacy. So, which I'll just do the same thing with. But I think after that, I'm not going to do like my long pre-orders anymore. I'll just direct people towards Patreon. <laughs> yeah. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I think we've talked about this. I don't think it was on the podcast though, about how, like, I really am considering, uh, doing a, uh, Savage North, uh, serial, Mm -hmm. like kind of episodic, Mm -hmm. um, storyline for one of my, cause I don't, you know, know what my projects are moving forward, except for my super secret one. So, um, (laughs) and I've been wanting to, it's kind of like what you were saying about how, you know, you want to get these series wrapped up before you start like going full throttle into something completely new. So I think that's kind of where I've been too. I've been eyeing serial writing for over a year now. Um, I actually had it on my (laughs) goal I never got to for this year um was to actually start doing that um so but anyway it it is what it is but definitely is something that I'm interested in doing um I think mostly for me it's because I want to be writing more consistently instead of Mm. doing on spurts you know um so anyway for me it's like very much about the instant gratification of knowing that people are reading it right away nice yeah I can I can imagine that yeah. Cause it's like, that's when you're so excited about it. It's like, oh my gosh. Cause like, I've, it's like, I feel like it started off as I would like write a scene and then I would send Mandy, my assistant parts of the scene. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, look what I just wrote. This is so cool. And then, you know, she'd be super excited because she's like my biggest super fan. Um, and now I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to start doing that with lots of people <laughs> who subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> nice. So yeah. So that's been fun <laughs> and um, ex- it, it's extremely satisfying, I have to say. <laughs> so um, yeah, and then uh, the only other thing I've been working on just like all the time is AI art. Um, but I have started to do something really fun um, and I'll share it other places eventually, but I'm doing these like breakdowns of different. Um, so, okay. So I've started touching up by hand um, the like almost perfect pieces of AI art. Uh, and then I've been sharing those with my patrons as well as, um, I know every, uh, AI art generating program is a little bit different or interface is a little bit different. Um, but I use night cafe and, um, well, I'm not going to get into the super nitty gritty, but I've been sharing the images, like the parents and grandparent and great grandparent images that kind of led me to like the final image and so that's been fun to share with people um and I really like um getting to like break it down and be like this is what I liked about this one and this is why I chose that one to move on and stuff like that so it's um an art form of its own (laughs) for sure (laughs) yeah I definitely have been keeping a lot of the outtakes because I think they're hilarious in fact but I already told you there's one really hilarious one for Finn that I made that I must the crazy hair is it that, is that what the it was? hair in multiple places the crazy <laughs> hair in multiple places some oh are inappropriate so oh my funny. god it's hilarious <laughs> and I saved it for so long and I have no clue what I did with it I can't find it on my phone or an email you sent so. it to me where did you send it I don't in... think I did though hmm. I don't I'm know sure if I did it would be somewhere right let's just say his groin area is very lusciously orange and long very curly <laughs> area <laughs> Like, well, I don't know if hell? you sent me that one. And that's what I'm saying. Like some of them are crack. Like he, they make him have like this long, curly, like really luscious, like <laughs> orange hair. It's like perm hair, and then it's also coming out of his area. So I'm just like, <laughs> okay. So he's oh extra bush. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, some of them are great. I need to do better at actually keeping them in a place I'll remember. What generate which um platform generated that <laughs> wonder? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hilarious though. Yeah, Night Cafe is like pretty heavy on the censoring. Mm. They'll show some boobs, but not not much more than that. Yeah. I will say my only gripe is there's a lot of boobs and I never see anything on guys, which other than like mm. there's man chest once in a while, but mostly not. Yeah. And oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. There Let's I get make lots this equal. I get lots here. of man chests. So the chest sharing is is equal, but I like mine doesn't do any parts. Yeah. So. No, mine doesn't either. Yeah. That 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 very bushy area I was talking about was coming out of his clothes. So like it was, <laughs> it's not like it was like uh, there was a no appendage or anything. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. I know. Anyway, okay, we should move on. Sorry. Um. <laughs> okay. 
So what are you reading right now? Okay, so um, I actually have been listening to a lot of audiobooks um, just because I've been so busy. Um, but where did I put it? I just wrote it down to. Um, I can tell you that I am currently listening to Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armitrout, which is mm-hmm. her like kind of gargoyles and demons, which is actually really cool. I love the idea of like gargoyles. So that's fun so far. I, I know I'm, I know there's going to be a cliffhanger, which I'm not looking forward to. I probably won't finish this. I never finish the series when there's a cliffhanger because I get, or I don't know why, uh, but we'll see. And then I also go ahead. What were you saying? I was going to say, um, she is not very concise in, um, Blood and Ash. Is she, is it, are they long? Is it a long book? <laughs> yeah, no, I question. think it is. Yeah. 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 Um, still really cool characters, great development, mm-hmm. but like, um, sexual tension and just like the world building is really cool and everything. Um, but it's just, like I said, I, I'm excited, but then I'm also like, ugh, the closer I get to the end, I'm like kind of dreading it. Cause like I said, I know there's probably gonna be a cliffhanger. So I'm mm. like, ugh. um, and then I did read for contemporary romance. I did read Serena Bowen, um, her boyfriend, uh, boyfriend, like uh new, I guess it's like new adult. It's about co- some college kids and, um, what this hockey, essentially it's like fake dating. Uh, he rents What's himself out, uh, boyfriend. It's just called boyfriend. Yeah, he uh, re- rents himself out for the holidays because he can't go home. So he might as well go to someone else's holiday meals and eat with their family. <laughs> it's really cute. Um, That's but I, she's an author that I feel like there hasn't been one thing of hers I haven't read yet that I or that I've read yet that I haven't liked. So um, I oh. really like her in general as a um, romance author. So I recommend her in general for anybody who dislikes contemporary romance. Cool. And what was her? She was Serena. Serena Bowen. Cool. Yeah. And she has lots of audiobooks, which is pretty much all I listen to as far as that goes. So cool. Yeah. Anyway, how about you? Not, I am not reading. Um, I have been listening to, I will say, I've been listening, well, I've been listening to my Fateless Trilogy playlist a lot um because I've added a ton of songs for book two which I'm writing right now um so that keeps me in the right headspace for that um and that hit was really helpful with reading um the devil wears Prada so then I would just have to pull myself out of that story and listen to my music for a little bit uh but then I've also been uh, listening to a bunch of podcasts I found um so it's like a very niche podcast that um I think almost none of our listeners are going to be interested in, but it's called subscriptions for authors. And so it, it is very much about like the whole Patreon platform and not just, but the model, the subscription model um, and a lot of serialization and that kind of stuff. So um, if you are an author who, <laughs> which I know is not our audience, <laughs> um, if you are an author though, interested in subscriptions, um, like LP is writing down right now. Yeah, subscriptions for authors, <laughs> and I'm actually going to be on the podcast. So oh, nice. Yeah, it'll be my first. No, not my first. It'll be my second appearance on someone else's podcast. So, so that'll be fun. Cool. Um, yeah, and uh, just some. I did find some podcast podcasts um that I've been listening to. Again, like I said, behind the scenes, working on Patreon and podcasts. So, nice. yeah. That's it. No books. Um, Fun times. Yeah. Anything else uh, to catch up on before I read the description? I don't think so. Um, Oh, I did get my, it's early. I did get my Sea of Storms paperback. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can I just tell, I know you know, because you're experiencing this with me. It's supposed to come tomorrow. Um, (laughs) Attempt number three on my part to get the paperback with the new cover of World After that Lucky LP got on her first shot. Yeah, that's so weird. I have ordered it. This is now my third time ordering it since we updated the cover. The first two ones that I got were the old cover. Yeah, that's What's weird. What's going on, Amazon? 
We should probably note that the ebook has not been updated. So if yes. you go and look, you won't find it. Yeah, sneaky people can catch a peek if they're sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> That's extra cryptic for you guys. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> Good luck. So hopefully I will receive the book tomorrow. Hopefully we will be doing some sort of a cover reveal shortly thereafter. I believe for we would be doing a cover reveal, reveal for World After and The Raven Queen mm-hmm. close together. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, keep your eyes and ears open, peeps. Yep. Okay, so um, spoiler warning, spoiler alert, anything beyond this point? I feel like we need the minions going, be do be do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So um, I'm going to read the description and then we will dive into the questions. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this might be juicier than you would expect the Devil Wears Prada to be. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, Andrea Sachs, a small town girl fresh out of college, lands the job a million girls would die for. Hired as the assistant to Miranda Priestley, the high-profile, fabulously successful editor of Runway Magazine, Andrea finds herself in an office that shouts Prada, Armani, Versace at every turn. A world populated by impossibly thin, heart-wrenchingly stylish women and beautiful men clad in fine ribbed turtlenecks and tight leather pants that show off their lifelong dedication to the gym. With breathtaking ease, Miranda can turn each and every one of these hip sophisticates into a scared, whimpering child. Andrea is sorely, or on Andrea, <laughs> Andrea is sorely tested, as Miranda calls her, tested each and every day, and often late into the night. With orders barked over the phone, she puts up with it all by keeping her eyes on the prize, a recommendation for Miranda that will get her a top job at any magazine of her choosing. As things escalate from the merely unacceptable to the downright outrageous, Andrea begins to realize that the job a million girls would die for may just kill her. And even if she survives, she has to decide whether or not it's worth the price of her soul. All right. So the devil wears Prada. Um, oh, I did not look at what year this was published. It's definitely, well, I think early 2000s or something. Mm-hmm. 2004. And then I think the movie came out in 2006. Is that right? Or was it later than that? I have no idea. So... And full disclosure, I've seen this movie a couple times. I did not rewatch it. I didn't have time. So Oh, you didn't? Mm-mm. Mm, I did. Um I didn't mean that to be like I did it. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I figured, you know, I finished the book. That was hard enough for me. So Yeah. Yeah. So um what format did you read? I feel like we can I guess. listened to audiobook. Yeah, so did I. Um, I will say, hold on, I'm drinking wine. <laughs> No, keep drinking, keep drinking, keep talking while you're drinking. <laughs> it's just like pouring down. Um, <clears throat> uh, I will say for a very rare occasion for me, I did actually speed up my audiobook. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Faster than usual. So did I. <laughs> um, okay, so just which did you prefer, the book or the movie? <laughs> Not the narration was not bad. The narration was great. Uh, I preferred the movie. I as as well prefer the movie. So I know we went into this um, knowing, like, kind of like girding our loins, <laughs> um, based on some reviews that we had pre-screened, I guess, about the mm-hmm. book. And I think that was part of the reason that I was even more excited to read the book because I wanted to know what exactly was this discrepancy between the book and the movie Mm -hmm. that made people such harsh critics of the book and saying like, don't read it, just watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, And we will get to that later. Uh, But first of all, um, what was it about the movie that made you prefer that over the book? Um, I think I think I had, I struggled with Andy's character in the book. Mm -hmm. And I think that the casting of Anne Hathaway made her a lot more Mm -hmm. endearing. Mm 
um, mm-hmm. as a character and I liked her more. Um, I mean, I enjoyed the movie, don't get me wrong, but it's not like one of my top 10 or I'm not like, I don't love the movie. I, mm-hmm. I do enjoy it. Uh, Dennis really loves it because he's a huge <laughs> Emily Blum fan. I think <laughs> she is amazing in that movie. Yeah. So I think, um, so, I mean, I do enjoy it. Uh, I guess I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know how different it would be. Um, I'm not saying it's super different, but I wasn't sure. It's weird that it's, it's like story-wise, it's very similar, you know, and like the characters for the most part have all the same names and they're like generally similar, but it does, there's a huge difference in terms of my enjoyment level. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, so I think overall, I think the person they cast as Andy in the, in the movie made her more endearing and less like, I kind of wanted to, didn't want to like throttle her the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And I think part of that also is just like being so deeply inside of Andy's head in the book and like hearing all of exactly. her thoughts. And like, she is not, she, Andy in the book is, in my opinion, extremely judgmental and like extremely she's like flippant and sarcastic at the same time yeah and also a little bit holier than thou like she's kind of dense in that like and I don't I mean there's probably a better word for it but I just feel like she's maybe self-centered is the right word for her because I mean you see it in the movie as well but you I feel like all of the decisions like like you said being so deep in her mind in the book of the reason why she's blowing off her friend and blowing off her boyfriend and blowing off her family and then what happens with Lily and like her her being able to rationalize like her friend is in a coma Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go see her because Miranda needs me it's like in what like I don't know it's just the whole thing like her rational thought like process that you get to see in the book to me, I think is one of the things that kind of made me like, are you for real? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, she's like, doesn't want to get yelled at and she's really flippant and complains, but she's out like sneaking a smoking break and like constantly taking her, t- or taking her time doing something. And then she's wondering why Miranda's pissed off. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know, it's interesting. And she like openly admits that she like takes longer break or like makes tasks take longer Knowing that Emily can't go to the bathroom while yeah, she's out. That's true. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's next level. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I I had a lot of issues with Andy's character um, and her like inner voice about how she thinks about people and like I found her commentary to be very like kind of, I don't know what the right term is here, but like problematic Um, and like xenophobic and homophobic and just like all kinds of phobics. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, I was like, wow, I feel like this book would not be, this book would be demolished if it was published today with a lot of the thoughts that Andy has and that are put forward as like just something that someone sit th- think thinks and like is like okay you know did you pick up on that or is that just me um I did in some parts I don't think I probably didn't pick up on as much as you because I also kind of like was just half <laughs> listening <laughs> She was talking so fast in the narration. <laughs> <I> <laughs> <can't> <laughs> <miss> <laughs> yeah. But um in general, yeah, I mean, I do see that about her in general. Um I don't know. I think one of the good things, and I don't mean to jump to your next question, but one mm-hmm. of the things I do like a redeeming quality, I think, about Andy in the book, or in the story, I guess I should say, is it's way if there's so many more dimensions and layers because you mm-hmm. think of like everything going on with Lily isn't even in the book yeah right? or in I, the movie right I thought At that all. was a great extra like Lily's character in the movie was so oh so uh, she was even in it yeah yeah See, I, she's I the friend remember. who like oh um so there's a scene in the movie this it's not in the book once um, there's one scene in the movie <laughs> there's there's a scene in the movie well there is there was a couple scenes in the movie where I was like, Ugh, her friends are like really annoying me. And like her boyfriend, I don't like in either the movie or the book. I felt like yeah, I agree with he that. He was he's a kind of like a wet blanket. 
very and like a little bit high and mighty like i don't know well he had the patience of a there are, given that. i think they're all young they're all young and so she did a good job of making them have the like self-centeredness of youth i think mm-hmm. yeah you know? that's true that is true and so i kept reminding myself that andy was 23 or whatever right 23 21 it's her first job right out of college she's never had a job before basically (laughs) not a real job so um that shows and like when she's when she's complaining about having to wake up (laughs) in the morning she's like oh my god she's like dude (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but Anyway, yeah, so there was a scene in the movie when um, there's they're at like an art gallery showing, I think Lily is a photographer. She's a very different, she's a totally different character in the movie. Um, she's not a student who, with a drinking problem. Who um, goes into a coma. Who goes into a coma <laughs> after a drunk driving accident. Yeah. Um, but she sees uh, Christian give Andy a kiss on the cheek in like a dark part of the art gallery and then she's like ugh, like you're no, I don't even know who you are anymore just kind of like I don't know Lily in the movie shows zero attempt to like engage with Andy or like understand the situation that she's going through oh I'm remembering her now I yeah I guess in my head I always thought she was like uh uh Alex's friend um but yeah no I, I can I remember that now yeah and yeah. I, I don't know why, but they changed Alex's name in the movie to Nate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is super. It's the guy from Entourage, if anybody yeah. is curious. Well, they um, also who I like Nor- to think of as being from Drive Me Crazy. <laughs> right. Well, they also made Miranda American instead of British. So, yes. And also, um, in terms of things that I loved in the movie, but <laughs> Miranda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like is amazing and also she's she's terrible like but she has redeeming aspects i guess well i think she humanizes her a little bit yeah more. like she it's a lot of facial expressions or hesitations that you can mm-hmm. portray as a person like mm-hmm. acting out a part versus you know um yeah. i think yeah i think she does really good about like lingering eyes and like you're wondering what she's thinking mm-hmm. and you know stuff that kind of makes her or like when um andy is in her house and you can tell like i think they were arguing or something mm-hmm. her and her husband and so you saw that like her her like uh defense mode come in yeah. and like the bitchiness come out and then you yeah. kind of, you see the layers behind yeah know. and i think like so in the movie miranda's marriage is falling apart in the books that's not yeah or in the book that's not happening and her husband is like super creepy in the book yeah um, am I, am I, um, just forgetting? I mean, I remember Christian in the movie, like obviously having an attraction to Andy, but I don't remember him being quite as creepy or sleazy either. No, he wasn't movie. as creepy or sleazy or pushy. Um, yeah. he did help her get the Harry Potter manuscript. I remember that. And then they slept together when she was in Paris, but he, he was like, no, they and they didn't have as many interactions. They met at a party that was not. I remember that. It was like a different version. It was a different party, um, and we only they don't really only run into each other a couple times. So, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was. I mean, I, I guess it was. I'm glad I'm glad I read it. I'm I was really curious to see what it was uh that made people say like just watch the movie um I mean it has good reviews it's not like they yeah it, it doesn't you know. have it's I think yeah I don't know and yeah well, I'm not gonna keep beating on it I'm not gonna keep flogging it <laughs> um okay but just generally I felt like the characters were more likable more dimensional other than Lily who is less likable and less dimensional in the movie versus the yeah. book. Um, well, and can we just say Stanley Tucci is in it too? And oh my gosh, go I him, know. So. Oh, he was amazing. I love him. He's like one of my all-time faves. And also like the, I was like, is that even possible? Like for when she would be describing how tall people were versus how much they weighed. 
How are they alive? <laughs> I don't know. I, do I don't want to like that a lot. I don't want to skinny shame anybody, but she was talking about people who are my height and the weight. I was like, I haven't been that weight since I was in like fourth grade. So I don't know how that's possible. Yeah. And that like these people are able to function in this high stress environment when they're like five, 10 and a hundred pounds and not eating ever. Yeah. Like, did they, how do their brains work? I don't know. But, um, maybe I was thinking too, taking it too seriously. Well, knowing her, she was probably just generalizing everything because she seems to just have an opinion. Yes. She had a lot of opinions. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I remember she was even, I forget the, um, the, was he the doorman or the guy who was always singing with like a security oh, guard or Edward? whatever. And it was letting her in. No, was like that even then she had all, like, she had all these like snide comments about him until the very end. And then he remembered her and like kind of mm-hmm. gave her the look and she was like, oh, I'm one of the cool kids. He's going to let me get, go in. And it's just like, really? Yeah. Cause this whole time you've been kind of like, oh, he's singing again. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end she appreciates it you know yeah so. yeah it was funny because like in I mean I, th- I feel like one of the reasons that the movie is I I find it so amazing is it's like a makeover movie <laughs> like the whole makeover situation and that's super fun <laughs> I really enjoy that um I had this moment when I was listening to the book and I kept thinking about it. I was reflecting on the movie too, not just the book. And I was like, what is the actual point of this book? Yeah. What is the outcome supposed to be? I thought about that at the end. Like wh- what is the character transformation here? So, I mean, I think it's that she learned a lesson and maybe found herself. Um, but found her confidence maybe. Yeah. Um, but I like, I remember thinking, I mean, it, she, it's not about falling in love Mm-mm. um she's not really any closer to her family I guess her and Lily are become closer in a way um but that's only because maybe she learns what really matters yeah I don't know it was just one of those things where I was like even the movie like I was like I, that's what I kept thinking is this just like a like p- dress up move like what what is the yeah. actual art well because like she takes the job because mm-hmm. she is told that anyone who works for Miranda right. for a year could get any job in the magazine business that they want. So that's her goal is to work for the New Yorker. She's obsessed with the New Yorker. Yeah, right, right. Not, I don't think she, she is so different. I don't even understand mm-hmm. how they're comparable in any way, but yeah. <laughs> um. So then she takes, it's like her first interview too, isn't it? Or I can't remember. Did she do other interviews? I don't remember. Anyway, so it's very, very early on in the job hunting process. She magically gets this interview or this um, interview and then this job uh, <laughs> that's like extremely high up in the company um, with zero experience. <laughs> but I guess it's because nobody else wants the job either. But that's funny because then they're, they're always saying like a million girls will die for this job. So I don't know. Yeah. But I guess um, it. I feel like the the character transformation or the character growth element is that she learns what she really values. But in the end, it's like she gets what she wants, right? The only thing she doesn't get is her boyfriend back, which she actually seemed okay about. Yeah. And I did look up book two, and it, I think it's a decade later, uh, and she's engaged to some society person, so... Yeah. Well, there you go yeah so it's not christian it's not christian <laughs> <laughs> no pushy christian um no it's not and then i think it's like something to do with her wedding and then miranda comes back into her life it sounded like she and emily had started a magazine too oh fun i know i love the emily character i feel like the emily character in both the book and the movie Mm -hmm. was like a much clearer defined person in terms of her motivations and yeah I don't know I'd love to hear her story (laughs) yeah so um okay so um 
we already talked about what we thought of Andy and Miranda. Uh, well, we, I guess we could talk a little bit about Miranda because she's an interesting character and is very different between the movie and the book. So um, I think we can agree that Miranda in the movie is much more complex. Um, what did you think about Miranda in the book? I mean, she's horrible. Yeah. I mean, she had, she, well, at least because we only see her from Andy's perspective. Um, Miranda is the boss in case anybody right. is not she's the devil in Prada. <laughs> she's the devil who's wearing Prada <laughs> um and she's the no, editor she really is. I mean, of runway right? she even straight up said that andy not leaving an event to go see her dying friend who's in a coma in the hospital was the best decision that she could have made and she'll reach out to her contact at the new yorker yeah because so then in the future, she can maybe get a job there. And I'm seeing they're going, wow, as a mother of two children, that's what you would tell somebody? Like, good decision. <laughs> Screw your family on the other side of the world. Like, just stay here for, as an assistant for a fashion event. Like, I don't know. It was dumb. That part yeah. was annoying. I felt like there was, I really love a good villain. I love a complex villain. Um, and I felt like Miranda was extremely villainous, but not complex. Yeah. There was no motivation that we got to see yeah. for why she was behaving the way she was. And I think that's what they did so well in the movie was they gave her that complexity and that motivation. Am I totally making this up? I was trying to remember this today as I was finishing the book. In the movie, are they going to fire her? Oh, uh, Miranda? Yeah. Isn't there a whole thing about that? Yeah, they're going to replace her with... um, I want to say her name is like Jacqueline... Jacqueline yeah and so whatever. there's nothing... She's the editor-in-chief of French Runway. And so they're going to replace Miranda because Miranda... Everything Miranda does is like super expensive and costly. She spends tons of money. And so they're going to repl- bring in the French editor in chief and she does everything cheaper and she's younger and Miranda does some kind of skeezy behind the scenes stuff. Not, remember not necessarily, but she just gives Jacqueline, a, she opens the door for a position that Jacqueline wants more which means she gets to keep her position, but it's, um, what was his name in the, um, I can't think of, but Stanley Tucci's character then gets, it's the position that he was going to have. That is. Oh, so it's really undermines him. That sucks. Nigel. That was his name. And like the Nigel character was definitely larger in life in the books, but Stanley Tucci just really, brought him to life <laughs> and like it felt like a wasted now i think they like seeing the movie makes nigel in the books feel like a wasted character like she could have done so much more with him but i feel like that's just because nigel in the movie yeah yeah, yeah. is so much more well uh, and like i guess that's how it is with, fairy godmother. with all the characters right like mm-hmm. miranda's the same way like that she could you know it's hard it's hard i mean that's where it gets that's the slippery slope but when it between the movie and the or the show and movie versus the book is they could have done this but they also came up with this on their own and it was really easy to change what's already written to suit yourself than it is to start from scratch so yeah yeah for sure yeah. i know i have um, to keep rem- reminding myself of that yeah i think i realized like as i was watching rewatching the movie for like the dozenth time that i'm just like a sucker for a well-done montage <laughs> And there was a, there's a, cause I love that montage in, um, Austin land, <laughs> the oh, makeover yeah, montage. Love that scene, I though. love that scene. Um, <laughs> and there's a montage in this one that's like her makeover montage. And she's like, it shows her after she gets the makeover, she's like wearing the like super expensive clothes and her hair and makeup are done better and stuff. Um, but it's like, it, it just like, fl- it's done really well. And I really, yeah. I was like, God, I'm such a sucker for a montage. <laughs> Did you like her montage, the uh, Anne Hathaway's montage in um, Princess Diaries in the first? Yes, I, I love the Princess Diaries. <laughs> what about Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion? 
I feel like there's a lot of montages. There are a lot of montages. I think I've only seen that like once and I don't remember loving it. Oh, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Her parents, I don't care. Her (laughs) parents, she, her parents made or somebody oh she says that she invented sticky notes That's or the glue she... the glue <laughs> on yeah the sticky is that notes. what it was oh my god anyway, i was just um... i don't know why but i was just thinking about that earlier today again i think i've only seen that one time i don't know why i was thinking about it it's the montage I'm it's you. the montage i don't even remember the montage they're getting all their ridiculous clothes for the radio. oh yeah i think or well, maybe I... making that up that, that maybe I remember that but man that awesome land montage is so good that's so funny now every time I see a montage I'm gonna think of you <laughs> a mon- don't get me wrong a montage can be done poorly there's a great montage and um I don't know if you've ever seen um hot chick with uh Rob mm-hmm. Schneider no and uh he there's a girl he it's a girl trapped in a guy's body <laughs> He's, he's like this thug homeless guy or some shit and so he goes in there he has to get a makeover because there's a girl in his body i mean it's totally slapstick but anyways he does his montages at the salon and getting all these looks done and every time he turns around in the salon chair he's a different backstreet boy <laughs> that's awesome howie nice. aj uh like the oh actual backstreet boys were in it no but like you can tell like Kevin with the for. long straight black yeah. hair, you know. Oh my god, it was funny. Mm, I like uh, it. I might have to send you the link so you can put it on the show notes because. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Uh, I feel like we've talked about the casting a lot. I feel like we've talked about pretty much everything. So there is a second book. Um, Revenge Wears Prada. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna read it? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> no. I don't think I am either. I'd watch the movie if they made it. That's yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see. I I might check her out and see if, if she's done um what others what other books she's done just to see if there's anything that um sounds particularly interesting. Um, so I did look at her stuff a little bit, and it looks like a lot of it is like I don't want to say like in the fashion industry. Oh, maybe there's three books. When life gives you. Lululemons is that how you say that mm-hmm. um I'm so out of all of this yeah so that is like a fashion that's a that's yeah a so I wonder so that's three one. books in this series but then she also has like um, Chasing Harry Winston um oh I did see that one everyone worth knowing has a purse on it okay yeah definitely all fashionista stuff yeah so mm-hmm. I don't know interesting yeah i mean she definitely has a niche hey it's better than us <laughs> better than us <laughs> we're oh niche free god, we are oh my god i don't know that's a, it sounds like a fungus free or thing mm. like it sounds like it could be bad or good yay oh my god mm. yeah i know what you mean so do you have any other thoughts um about this book um I definitely think that it was a really fun I feel like it's kind of it seems like an Anne Hathaway role so I, I the casting seemed pretty pretty spot on for that mm-hmm. I think it was a really good unexpected choice for Meryl Streep it was nice to see her playing a role like that because mm-hmm. she's always in such serious roles you know yeah um, so I really enjoy, I think she actually was, I don't care about Andy or Anne Hathaway. I think if anything, she's what made the movie for me. Is, oh yeah. She was know, amazing. But I also feel like Emily Blunt, I just feel like the casting made the movie. I think that that. Every time I think of Emily Blunt in that movie, I imagine her face. Remember she, all she can, like, all she can do is like her face, she's sick and her yeah. nose is red and she's <laughs> so miserable. Oh my gosh. That, I, I want, I'm glad you brought that up. So as I was watching that part of the movie, it just like gives me like, uh, like a spine chill now, like post COVID or like post, you know, the COVID shutdowns of like yeah. how she's just like carrying around her snotty tissues and she's like, <laughs> and like handing her stuff to people. And I'm like, uh, she's going to kill someone. I know, and meanwhile, then is like, oh, she's so hot or pretty. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, she was just she? has like these wadded up, like used tissues sitting on her desk at work. It's like gross. 
was she extra was she more bitchy i feel like she was more bitchy in the movie than she was in the book is that true or no Mm, maybe i mean there was that line in the book kind of like early on when andy thinks like i wouldn't know how much they were talking about me behind their back behind my back Mm -hmm. until later and we never actually like really got to see it um we never got to see her at least that i can remember like learning or noticing or like kind of getting clued into like how much they were talking about her behind her back um but in the movie we did get to see emily with her friend like kind of like like <laughs> like yeah. laughing at andy yeah. i was just curious i was just thinking too you had you were asking like um we were talking about miranda's a villain and one of the other things that makes her like extra horrible in the book is and i'm sure she does it in the movie too but again just like as all these things compile it's just straight up doing what she can to purposely calling them the wrong names yeah and um i didn't ask for this i asked for that and then she clearly didn't ask for that or you know what i mean yeah. like oh that's yeah what i said no that's yeah, not she at was, all which what was like said. i clearly said it was in the post the washington post i don't yeah. know why you're looking in new york you know yeah. like all this stuff just yeah it, it did like seem, she's so um, fin- she's very yeah. vindictive and then intentionally that's really weird. and that's what's really weird is at the end of the book Emily when Emily calls her to quote unquote fire Andy after the whole blow up of her telling Miranda like she flat out says fuck you in front of everyone at the event Mm -hmm. um she I can't remember what Andy asked her if it's like well was she still well she's oh can I at least get a flight home and she's like oh well Miranda's not that vindictive I'm sitting there going yeah she is oh actually i can totally see her being something doing something horrible like that yeah or like vengeful or something like that but i was like i feel like she is definitely and now that i'm thinking about that it's really interesting how in the book the thing that drives andy over the edge to make her finally blow up at miranda is the most ridiculous thing and i'm sitting there going they just she just had all the stuff happening with the coma her best friend being in a coma and her you know her ex-boyfriend or whatever saying you know you should really come home and see her and then her getting all mad at him for making her feel guilty which she clearly should have mm-hmm. like all these things and then the thing that actually makes her tell and miranda off is when miranda is like uh, my kids need their passports blah 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 i'm sitting there going wait a second so her unrealistic demand which you've had through the entire book is what set her off i guess it's like the straw that broke the camel's back but she didn't really seem to be upset with miranda for being like oh yay good good decisions to stay here mm-hmm. instead of going home well it I was like know. a combination i felt like it was a combination of miranda saying you remind me of myself or i can you know what it was oh, like maybe. that combined with the impossible task and andy was just kind of like it was like the light bulb i guess yeah. like you said the straw that broke the camel's back yeah anyway so. i was just like really that's what it took i would have been out of there so fast <laughs> i don't know but i know that's different i'm also a lot older like you said i i did keep forgetting she's like really young yeah super young first real job like i don't know oh and also i feel like it's like the opening chapter can I just say um so she's driving the Porsche she doesn't know how to drive a stick shift in to begin with she's driving it it's just been like touched up or the paint's been retouched or something and she is smoke it's Miranda's Porsche and she is smoking in the car and I was like I forgot about that and it's so her, you like, go to get your boss or something your right? boss is no it was like a that was the scene and then they back Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because that was the very beginning. No, okay, that yeah. was more like middle-ish um, in terms of like timeline. But I was like, okay, oh. so you go, you pick up your boss's Porsche and you're just like chain smoking in her car. Knowing who your boss is. Yeah. Maybe you're like, she's going to know it was you. <laughs> we don't ever see Miranda smoking. So. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, Really? Yeah, and it's like in the whole smoking thing, it's like you smoke, cool, whatever. But like, I feel like she used that as she kept 
mentioning it over and over and over again. Yeah, I felt like like using it as a way to like kind of get back at people or to like yeah. whatever. And then I think that's just the part that was like really. Yeah. And also just yeah, yeah, it was just like a lot of talking about her smoking. <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah so anyway um now do you have any final thoughts no i think After i've gotten that all out <laughs> okay um well then uh thank you for listening everyone don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode's links and book recommendations and we will be back in a couple weeks to chat about our next book talk book which is kingdom of the wicked i'm super excited about this one by I'm totally gonna butcher her name, Carrie Maniscalco. Maybe as she cringes. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Carrie. <laughs> if I said that wrong. Uh, if you are enjoying the show, we would love it if you left us a rating and or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen that allows for reviews. And don't forget to join the No Shelf Control Facebook group, link to in the show notes. Until next time. Happy reading. Happy reading.